Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you are doing great today. Now in today's video, we're going to look at creating table with constraints. What are constraints? Now, if you cast your mind back to our introductory lesson, we mentioned what constraints are, that they are used to enforce and ensure data integrity in the database. Okay, now we have things like your primary key, you know, your foreign keys, your um, unique constraints, your check constraints, you know, and your not null constraints. Now, all of these ensure the integrity of data in the database. So today we're going to start creating tables with constraints. Basically, there are two types of constraints. We have what is known as column level constraints and table level constraints. So we're going to look at the two types of constraints when creating a table. Now I need you to look closely to our screen. We have a create table statement, okay, with the different columns and their data type. And immediately after the columns, we have the constraints. So this is known as column level constraints where you have your constraints specified immediately after the columns. Okay, so let's look at it for our employee ID. We have a primary key, okay? And then for the ename column, we have a unique constraint. You can see the name of the constraint, constraint, and then you have the word unique. And then the salary column has a not no constraint. And then the gender column has a check constraint, then the value is gender in, you have male and female. Anything outside these two letters, you might face an error when you try to insert data into the database. And then the department ID, of course, is a foreign key that references the department's table. So let's create this table. We can see table created. So we're going to test these constraints to see if they're actually active. Okay, so the first constraint we are going to test is the check constraint. If you look at the gender column, okay, the constraint is actually male or female. So anything outside these two letters might generate an error. Now, in our insert statement, we have D instead of a male or a female. So let's execute this and see what error message we are going to receive from the database. Good. Now, the error report says check constraint violated. Why did we face this error? It's because we did not use either M or F which is male or female. We are using something else, which is D. So are you seeing how the constraints work? Okay, so we have another insert statement again. Let's try to insert this and see if we'll receive an error. Okay, one row inserted. Now, if you observe closely, if you observe closely, because we did not put a not null constraint on the gender column, and we have a null value, the row was inserted successfully without any error. But then let's test another constraint. Let's test the unique constraint and see. We've inserted one record already. So I'll just change this to two. And then we have an error again. Say unique constraint violated. Where is the unique constraint? If you look at the ename column, Okay, we specify that this is a unique constraint. So what that means is that you cannot have the same name in that column. So considering the fact that we already inserted one rule and we had the name Abigail in that column, we cannot insert another record with the name Abigail. So that's how the constraints work. Remember, we mentioned that there are two types of constraints, column level constraint and then table level constraints. 
But the best practice, however, is to use the table level constraints. So let's quickly put up the query for table level constraints and see what it looks like. Okay, so if you take a look at our screen, you see the syntax for the table level constraint. Now, the difference between this and the column level is that the constraints actually come after all the columns have been specified. We don't have the constraint in each of the column as we had it in the column level. So you create your table, you specify the different columns, and then underneath you specify all the constraints. Okay, so if we execute this query, you see the table has been created. So this is the difference between your table level constraint and your column level constraint. Remember again, the best practice is to use the table level constraint. So guys, thank you for watching this video. I hope it was interesting to you. If it was, kindly like it and share it widely. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell icon so you don't miss out whenever I drop another valuable content. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now.